All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about APRS and how you use a Baofeng handheld ham radio, along with an application called APRS Droid, to run an APRS station. So at a high level, I want to talk about what APRS is, and it's an automatic packet reporting system. And I guess that's saying a lot. But what it allows you to do is report information such as positional information, weather information, or simple messages, either over RF on an FM signal or connected to the internet, which is a relatively newer development. But APRS has been around for a while, so it's not that new. Um, and that way you can share information either locally, regionally, or globally via RF or via internet. APRS was developed in the late 1980s by a fellow named Bob Bruinga. I think I'm saying that right. His call sign is WB4APR. And uh, he's a pretty high-level engineer with the Naval Academy, so he's wicked smart. And uh, one of the things I'll say about him is he still maintains the APRS website. So anyhow, big thanks to Bob for putting all this together for people like us. You can get more detailed information about APRS, or Automated Packet Reporting System, from the Wikipedia site, which I'll link below. But it goes over the history, it talks a little bit about the network overview, types of equipment that you use, some configuration changes that you may need or set. Um, it's a pretty handy website, so I would encourage everybody to go ahead, check it out, and see what it's all about. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about what you're going to need or what I use when I use APRS. So first, I use a Baofeng radio, and just about any variant will work, a UV5R, UV5RE. Um, in this case, I'm using the BF-F9V2. You're also going to need an audio interface between your radio and your Android tablet. In this case, I use the BTEC APRS-K1 audio interface cable. Uh, the reason I use this is it has the Kenwood adapter that works fine with a Baofeng, as well as a number of other radios on the market. And then it has a uh, microphone and speaker jack that fits right into my Android tablet, making it very handy. For the and Android tablet, you could use a smartphone if you want. I'm just using the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8. You can pick these up off of eBay for about $100. Um, they run pretty well. It's a little bit of an older device, but it can handle APRS just fine. You're also going to need an APRS client to run on your Android tablet. And uh, in this case, I'm using the APRS Droid application. Now, if you want to broadcast your APRS information over the internet, you use an interface for APRS-IS. And uh, this requires a passcode. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you get that passcode. But you have to register to get it, and it takes a few days. So if you're thinking about APRS, go ahead and do that first. And then you're going to need an amateur radio or ham radio license to broadcast anything over the ARS or amateur radio spectrum. And that kind of goes without saying. Setting everything up is pretty simple. You want to take your Kenwood adapter on your cable and firmly seat that in your Baofeng radio. Then you're going to take the mic speaker interface and then plug that into the port on your Android tablet. Make sure that everything is plugged in securely so that way you don't have any problems. Next, you need to install your APRS application on your device. So in this case, I go to the Google Play Store and I do a quick search for APRS Droid. That's the application that I want to use. It'll pull back the search results, and then I want to go ahead and select the application, and then perform the install like I would any other installation. You can see here that the application costs $4.95, so you're going to have to make a little bit of an investment. So as I go ahead and purchase the application and proceed through the installation, I'm going to be prompted for some additional information, such as my call sign. You can just fill that out and then proceed like you would using any other application. You're also prompted for your APRS-IS passcode if you have one. Here's a link to the website where you'll be able to request your APRS passcode. Like I said, go ahead and do this early so that way you don't have to sit around waiting. I wanted to talk a little bit about the network topology of APRS. So here's a diagram that I put together. In the lower left-hand corner, you can see an Android tablet or Android device that's connected via cable to a Baofeng radio. Now we're going to use ours through the middle of the screen to connect over RF to what's called a digipeter. 
Some digipeters are connected to the internet, and you can see that represented by the network diagram on the bottom part of the screen. And then some digipeters are not connected to the internet, but they can still broadcast your APRS information. Along the top, you have an example of another station where somebody's using a laptop and a TNC or a terminal node controller to interface with a radio that broadcasts out an FM signal. And you can use all kinds of laptops, you can use all kinds of TNCs, and you can use all kinds of radios, which makes deciding what kind of equipment you want to use uh, a little bit difficult or confusing at first, but you can probably cobble together most of the station with equipment that you already have. And again, along the bottom, you can see using the um, Android tablet, you can actually feed your APRS information directly into the internet without the use of a radio. So if you have any questions, you can post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. But as I said, the topology is a little bit confusing. You need to understand that it's made up of an APRS client, a TNC or a node controller, a radio, and then uh, you have to connect to a DigiPeter to rebroadcast your uh, signal over RF or connect it through the internet. So at a high level, I wanted to cover what a TNC does. And essentially what it does is it takes digital information from your computer or your tablet and modulates that in a way that your radio can consume it as an analog signal. And then it pushes that analog signal out over an RF spectrum. Now when your radio receives APRS data, it passes it along via sound card or sound output to the TNC where the TNC demodulates the analog signal and that makes it something that's consumable by your handheld device or your laptop or your tablet. And then that can report back APRS information that you're receiving. Now in terms of best practices or things that are good to do, you want to check your radio configuration and make sure that you're using the frequency for your location. In the United States, we use the 2 meter band and we use 144.390 megahertz. You also want to check your volume setting because you don't want to undermodulate or overmodulate. I usually keep mine at around 40%, but it may be different on your radio. And then you also need to use Vox in the case of using a Balfang. That's just how it works. I keep my Vox setting relatively low at number two. You also want to make sure that your radio can reach a digipeter. A lot of times people are like, hey, I'm not getting anything. I'm not sending anything out. Um, so you need to make sure that you're in range. And a digipeter must either have an eye gate or a relay to a digipeter with an eye gate in order to propagate over the internet. We kind of talked about that in a network topology video, or slide, I should say. Anyhow, you want to check your Android device configuration and make sure you manage your volume setting there as well. Also, you want to mute any notifications because if you get an email or a text message on your device, you don't want the sound of that alert going out over APRS. Also, you need to check your APRS configuration Make sure you have the right call sign and APRS-IS passcode. You want to make sure that your location is correct and you're using the appropriate connection protocol for what you want to accomplish. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Here's how I set up my Balfang radio. Frequency mode. One, four, four, three, nine, zero. Menu. Let's walk through the APRS droid configuration. As mentioned, you're going to need your call sign and your APRS-IS passcode should you wish to use it. Once you log in, you're going to see a variety of options. What's really handy about this application is that you can actually pull up a map so you can see where you're located and you can also see where the people that you're communicating with are located. It's quite handy. So the first thing I want to do is go down and select preferences. And then here's where I can go through and pick the configuration that works well for me. One of the most important ones is your SSID. And this tells what kind of station you're using. I typically use a mobile station um, or a handheld radio, which is a dot seven. You also want to be able to put your path in. I use wide one and wide two, wide one dash one and wide two dash one. And that allows me to hop a little bit further than one digipeter and it helps get my signal out. It may be different for you. So also you can pick your connection protocol. In this case, I'm using APRS-IS because I want my signal to get out over the internet. And then here I can set my connection type. I'm using an HTTP post.
Under your connection protocol, you can set how you want to connect to your device. In this case, I'm using a high quality demodulator, which is that APRS cable, but you can also use Bluetooth. You also set your symbol and your frequency under your position reports. You can enter in a comment or a URL. Now you can change your location source to be smart beaconing. You can use it to give a new location based off of a time frame, or you can use it to base off of a change in your location. Once it's done, you can start tracking or sending out your position, whichever you choose. Here you can see on APRS-FI, various folks using APRS to do their daily things. Maybe you're tracking a boat, <clears throat> maybe you're tracking a shipment on a truck, or maybe you're a ham that's just reporting your location or broadcasting weather information. Anyhow, I encourage everybody to go ahead and give APRS a try. If you have any questions, you can post them below. I'll do my best to answer them. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it.